If you want to use Mac 3 as your CNC control program, and if you want to easily position your tool on the workpiece, and then zero the access to the material so you can start cutting, having a handheld remote really makes things easier. You can use your keyboard and then activate it with the arrow keys and other shortcut keys you could yourself assign to the program. Perhaps you could also use a game controller to do the same thing. But what I want to show you on this video is a remote control made exclusively to run your CNC. Now, this remote control I have used for a while and works pretty well. There are two ways to make a remote control. The first one is to use an arcade game controller made by Ultimar called the iPad 2. Cost around $45. And if you glance over Mac 3 instruction menu, under the emulated input signals, the menu mentions that might be a delay on the emulated signal, but I have not observed any delays or problems when I use it on my system at all. And the other way is what this video is all about. The idea of the arcade game button control panel is not mine. I watched a video from edgejunk.net where he shows his control panel. Then I visited his website to find more information about it. But then I watched a video from Laguna Tools. When I was searching for ideas to redesign my CNC router table, on one of their models, they use a handheld remote to operate the machine. The Laguna CNC HAC stands for handheld control. I think it's where all the programs to run the machine are stored, sort of like a 3D printed controller. And it is wired to the CNC controller and does not have network capability. It has a USB receptacle or you can plug in the whole HHC to the computer to transfer the files. Also, it uses a tactile membrane keyboard, which in my opinion is hard to use. Anyway, I was thinking on making my own HHC. I had made some cherry key keyboards for my alignment computer programmer in the past. This one I made it in 2017, and this other one I made it in 2013. So I was thinking to do something like this to make my own HAC. I would have to design the position of all the keys, and resembling the keyboard arrows, I could use them to do the jogging action. Then I thought that instead of the keys, I could use the micro joysticks, like the ones they use in a gaming control. So I purchased two in a package, but instead of the switches, they have potentiometers, so unless you use them with Arduino, it was not what I needed. Then I realized that my old control panel works pretty well, and I only need to improve a couple of things on it. And since I will move the power buttons and the emergency stop switch to the cabinet itself, I would only have a keyboard type signals going to the computer through the iPad controller via the USB cable. So I said, why not use it? It would be slightly smaller, and my reason for making it in the first place was because the buttons were big and easy to use. Then I thought, what if I use a wireless keyboard transmitter instead of the iPad controller? Wouldn't it make my HAC wireless? So I started to select a few keys on the keyboard to assign to the different shortcuts on Mac 3, like the arrow keys and the page up, page down keys. For the jog control, that is if you try to select the keys that come as a shortcut on Mac 3. However, I don't think it matters which key you select if you assign it with the Mac 3 screen editor because you can assign the key, uh, any key that you might want. Nevertheless, it would be good to have the original assignations so you can use any keyboard attached to the computer. So it is time consuming, but you can locate the different connector routings using the keyboard plastic membranes to trace which connector combination activates which key. So what you can do is remove the different key caps and mark the plastic membrane underneath so you can follow the traces to the transmitter. The transmitter has 26 connections separated in half. So to locate the pins, I named it left and right and the pin number from left to right. So for example, I'll trace the letter Z to left four and right 13, the letter X to left four and right 12, etc. It might take a little while, but you can find the right pin combinations. 
The good thing about this is that all you gotta do is short out the pins to activate the keyboard controller. So you can use any type of momentary switch. So I got to the task of tracing and testing all necessary keys using the membranes to finally come up with the key diagram. Then I proceeded to solder all the wires to the controller. Then I work on the button position on a piece of MDF. With the small CNC router, I cut the holes on the acrylic to mount the buttons. Then I spray paint the acrylic. After making an MDF box, I apply contact cement to both the box and the acrylic. Then I glue both pieces together. I forgot that I had to round the pieces, so I had to repaint the acrylic after applying the primer coat and finishing painting the whole box. Then using my laser engraver, the graphics were etched to the acrylic. This is how it looked when finished. Now the box is uh, ready to start doing the wiring. But before that, I had to 3D print a couple of handles to put on the side of the box to make it easy to move it around. Here's the remote with the wiring done. You can see that I've substituted the original AAA batteries with 2C batteries. This will make it last a long time. I got the remote done. It's all enclosed in this box. The, um, the control, the batteries and everything uh, in this thing and as you can see, uh, right here on the side is the on-off switch. And that switch is so when you handle the, uh, the remote, uh, you don't accidentally bump into it and uh, activate the program. So once you're ready to use it on the machine, then you go ahead and turn it on. And that turns the keyboard on onto the uh, computer, right? And uh, once it's on, then you can uh, uh, start using or running the program, or whatever. Uh, in this case, if I want to jog uh, the different axis, it's not going to do anything because I got the uh, jog on, jog off button right here pressed on. But I'm going to turn it on. As you can see, it turned on my green light right there. And now I can jog the machine and the three axes, right? So now, if I want to uh, zero the axis, uh, zero X, and zero Y, and zero C, it's the same as before. So that's, uh, that's done. And then if I wanted to go to C, here's the go to C button. Uh, if I want to run the program, I turn you know, this button on, and it turns the cycle on. And uh, this one off. Hold the feed, and I make it run again. This increase, decrease the uh, feed rate. This will increase the feed rate, and this will reset it. And this will stop it. And this is the uh, reset switch. So, as you can see, everything works uh, remotely. So it doesn't need uh, a wire. So doesn't need the wire uh, you can move it in anywhere on the machine and uh, and there's no no problem with the wire right so that's the point of this thing so it's got two little handles right here to move it around because it's uh, it weighs around five pounds probably probably six I don't know I had to wait it uh, but you're not gonna be carrying it so just carrying it and put it on, on top of the table, I think. Uh, so this is it. Uh, this is uh, a remote control wireless with a uh, wireless keyboard controller uh, instead of the iPad uh, controller wired through the USB port. So I think this is a good improvement. Uh, I'm going to have to test it on the machine, though. But uh, I mean, if it works right here on the... Uh, on, on the program, 
it'll run on the machine. It's the same thing. So, all right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my videos, you might consider subscribing and ring the bell notification so you won't miss any new content. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.